My name's Terry. I've been a certified nurse midwife for 25 years. If you come into my house, literally, you're going to walk on junk. It's that bad. There's parts that are walled off that you know there's empty space behind it, but thank God I didn't fill that up <laughs> or that up. Some of the things I like to collect are eyeglasses. I like kitchen gadgets. I love tools, lots of containers to help me clean. Lots of clothes and shoes. There's a lot of electronics. There's just a lot of stuff. It's just way too much stuff. I think the worst thing about having a house you can't even walk through is it's embarrassing. You can't have anybody over. It's disgusting. It's filthy. It's gross. The only thing that can make this worse is if I had dead animals in here, too. I'm Maggie, and I'm Terry's daughter. It is tough for me to know that my mom lives this way. There could be a situation where something falls. There could be a fire. There could be a situation where she needs to get out quickly, and she's not able to do that. So I absolutely worry about her safety and well-being. In 1996, my hoarding got out of control when I accumulated three people that passed away their stuff. My husband died. We were divorced, but we were still good friends. I got all of his stuff. Then my dad died two months later. I got all of his stuff. And then my mom died in 2007, I think. And I cleaned her house. And so there were certain things. I mean, I'm sure they're still packed in that room. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Dorothy Brenninger. I'm a professional organizing expert, and I specialize in hoarding. Thank you for being here. We have quite a group, don't we? Yes. yes. Let me tell you who's who. First of all, we've got Harry. We're going to be working with you and for you today. We have your lovely daughter, Maggie, Stephanie, Joanne, friends and neighbors. Of course, we've got our certified boss organizers, and we've got Dax with his Mr. Junk team and Dr. Tolan, yay. So a lot of people supporting you. You ready for that? Mm -hmm. It's already bringing up tears, isn't it? Are you all ready? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. okay, everybody, let's go. I don't know. Just I mean, get rid of it. Just get rid of it. Really, don't. I don't want to look at it. Just go. Here we are in the first 10, 15 minutes. I'm watching Terry sort, and she's toss, 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 toss. Like, wow, this is unusual. Hey, Dr. Tolan. Hello. I wanted you to come over. OK. First of all, Terry's doing very well. Terrific. Letting things go. And I love it whenever a client says, in this case, Terry, what should I do with this trash can? Mm -hmm. And it, it came from the living room. Mm -hmm. What it looks like on top is trash. Yeah. But she doesn't know what's in there. Yeah. And Terry says, go ahead and tell him. I said, I don't need it. Just take it. I don't wow. want to look through it. How did you make that decision, Terry? 
It wasn't a big process. <laughs> I'm really impressed by that because I think a lot of people might feel compelled to go dig through it. And I'm just really impressed by the fact that you're not doing that. Me too. <laughs> I'm just wanting to get this done as quickly as possible. Fair enough, as it's do we. It's very painful. What are you finding painful about? Just all of it. Uh huh. I get a sense that she wants me to know that this is hard, but she doesn't really want me to intervene. I just, I just want to get through it as quick as possible. The problem is that you can only keep those emotions at bay so long before they come out. And if you haven't dealt with them, they're going to come out sideways in ways that are really unhealthy. So I'm going to keep poking at Terry and see if she's willing to open up to me. Question number one. It's pretty grimy. It's pretty nasty. Can I just let it all go? I don't know if there's anything in there that I need to keep other than the scales. What I'm going to do... I donate the I... scales and you can get rid of everything else. Wow. Really? Well, but unless you, unless you find Mona Lisa under there okay. or something. All right. One thing that I have to do. You know what I have to do, right? Make it safe. Yeah, but apart from that, what do I need to call your attention to here? The filth, the toilet. The toilet. Right. So the toilet has not been working for two right. years? Probably. I can just replace it, too. The toilet? I can get it replaced. OK. So the point is, it's going to be replaceable, but I'm going to do the one thing that really annoys you. But <laughs> it, it's up to me to do it. That's not OK. I know. That's just not acceptable. I know. I know. Ever. I know. You're... And that's exactly how I grew up, though. I just want you to know. I, I grew understand. up with a two-holer, and I grew up with a slot pocket. So it's really not that odd to me. All right. So you're used to it. You're used to it's it. It's not that odd to me, but it's gross as hell. I get it. And it smells horrible. And I regard you as a very high professional. I know. So while you grew up in that. Right. And some of my patients have this. They don't yeah. have running water. They don't have electricity at all. Yeah. And so, you know, like I said, it's just not that odd to me, but I don't want it. <laughs> I want to take a shower. You want to take a I shower? I want to take a shower. OK. I understand. OK. Well, we're here to just make this all happen. But if something goes wrong in your house again. I have a plan. You have a plan. I, have a, I will have a plan. You're not going to let this happen again. I feel you. I'm really sorry it's like that. You're fixing me. <laughs> <laughs> You're fixing me, Dorothy. Well, I don't know about that, baby. I think you will. We did get a lot done. We exchanged the dumpsters. We're filling up another one. We've done the rest of the dining room. We got to the bathroom. We got into the bedroom. We did the garage. It is a lot of work that's been done. I don't know if you're ready for the day, but we certainly are. Yeah? Of course. This is day four. This is where we get to do what we hope to do, which is provide you with a clean, safe home. Mm -hmm. Right? I wanted us to kind of come out here because I did want to acknowledge all the efforts that you've been making to get organized. There are about 650 bins that are here. When you look at it all this way, what do you see? I mean, do you... I see, I just see the same thing you do, Dorothy. I see a lot of bins in an attempt to try to fix it. So, I am going to ask you to go through the bins. I bought them. I know them. I see them. Okay. I recognize every one of them. OK, got it. So I don't need to go meet them over again. I think this was meant to shame me somehow. What I like to do when I'm organizing and someone has a collection of shoes, bags, in Terry's case, bins, boxes, baskets, containers, I like to lay out the collection so the person can come through and make quick decisions. Keep, toss, keep, toss. Terry's interpretation, I'm trying to shame you. It's not to shame you. I want you to pick out bins that you want to keep. 
and we want to use them in your house effectively, and then we want to get rid of everything else. So that's my aim here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Can you see these baskets? I don't want them. Thank you. Boom! You made 650 decisions in about 10 minutes. That's supreme. Your decision making has been quick throughout. I just want to point out another kind of achievement. Thank you. Okay? Thank Not you. shame, my little girl. Doing a good job. Thank you. Well, Terry, thank you for taking time to talk with me. I, I thought, and I've, I've been kind of looking forward to this conversation, and, and you know, I, I think it's helpful for us to just take a little bit of time away from the work and just kind of talk things through a little bit. It's part of the process. It is I part of understand. the process, yeah. It seems like there's kind of two issues here. One is that a lot of stuff is coming into the house, but the other is not, it sounds like not much is going out of the house. Right. right? So it's hard for you to let go of things, right. it sounds like. And, and I wanted to kind of get a sense of, you know, what do you think prevents you from discarding? I don't know. I don't know. Like, I can't answer you. Like, I don't like know. Like you were overwhelmed? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Well, that, that happens. It just got out of control. If we kind of look back in your life, sometimes, not always, we find that there are things that have happened to a person that might help us explain why they engage in the behavior that they do. I mean, do you have any thoughts about that in, in your life? Well, I think in my life, you could have the subtitle of, do you want A, B, C, D, E, or F? I'm not sure I follow. That there's many times that I've been traumatized. Okay. So, I, I don't, there's... <laughs> so you've been so traumatized? That, yeah, not as an adult. Okay, as a kid? Yeah. Can I ask? I mean, what, what No, happened? I just, it, there was just a lot of trauma. Okay. Lots and lots of trauma. There was pedophiles. There were there was uh, physical abuse. There was mental abuse. There was neglect. There was drugs, uh, pharmaceutical drugs. There was alcohol. My mom had an affair the entire time that she was married to my dad, and not not just the affair. I mean, I remember the nighttime escapades mm. and the hiding of the car and taking back roads so nobody'd see us go mm -hmm. to his house and mm. all that. My dad was a drunk and a pedophile oh, goodness. and tried oh. to rape me, oh, you know, wow. so there's, like I said, there's A, B, C, that's wow. what I meant by that. Just sounds like the repeated traumas that you've experienced, that, that it, would be, it would surprise me if that didn't play a role here somehow. I have my master's degree, so, mm -hmm. and I've taken lots of classes in psychology, and, and sometimes they're very painful. Yeah, you know, painful. Painful. Where does the pain come from? It just brings that bull back up. From your childhood? Mm hmm She's just had a tremendous trauma history. I mean, she just sounds like she had a horrible upbringing. And, and I can appreciate how that might have led her to learn how to wall off her emotions. Of course, I don't think that does her a service now, but I see where that might have come from. I, I think she's got to talk more about the childhood trauma. I think she has to process that with somebody. Thank you for talking with Thank me. Thank you. I appreciate it. And the next piece, of course, and we'll talk more about it later, is I'm going to try to set you up with a really good therapist, you know, and I'd Thanks. like you to go. I think I'll go.
what? This is crazy. This is great, Terry. <laughs> yeah. I was really surprised. Walking into the house for the first time after everything was finished was just amazing. It was, I didn't think it would look that good. Yeah, this is so much you. So Terry, I'm, I'm, I'm curious, what's your reaction as you look around? What do you think? I, I think it's beautiful. Can you see space for friends and family? Definitely. What I want to do is recap what we've done, because we've been here for days, right? And over those days, you know me now, Terry, I like to keep track of the numbers and the hours. And in this case, we racked up enough hours that it took almost a year's worth of time wow. to do this house. And you wonder why you couldn't do it alone. So I want to really thank you for letting us help you and, and you're receiving the help. Thank you. Because I know that's hard for you. Uh, Maggie, I, I know, you know, we've talked and you've been worried about your mom. How are you feeling right now? Amazing. She's just spectacular and um, I'm just excited for her. I really had no kind of idea what to expect, but um, just seeing the magnitude of everything being gone and the decorating and everything that Dorothy and the team and the junk crew were able to accomplish has been just absolutely amazing. So we have more to go. I know you want to see it. I want to show it. Let's get going. OK. Oh, my god. <laughs> oh, yes, honey. How cool yes. is that? Welcome to San Juan Island. Hey, someone's been listening. This was their favorite room to do, I can tell. <laughs> the bedroom? Yes! That's the best room. We love putting it together because it's Terry's personal goal. I casually asked her, eh, where would you like to travel in your lifetime? She said, I just want to go back to the San Juan Islands. We went there as a family. I have good memories. I want to go there again. This room isn't just your bedroom. This room is your future, mm -hmm. right? It's just representative and symbolic of exactly. what we hope for you. And Maggie has her own car. <laughs> One of the biggest parts of this project was I received aftercare to help me with my emotions and this hoarding business. I need to get it under control. I'm going to get it under control. I don't know what the future holds, but I do not intend to ever, ever hoard again.